Welcome back guys and today we'll learn some new things about algorithms used in the game industry. So let's start. What is the main algorithm that you will probably use in a game? Actually there are many implementation of these but the main algorithm is pathfinding. What is pathfinding? Actually the finding is a really simple idea of algorithm but really tough to implement. What is the problem? The problem is that you need to find a way to reach a point B starting from a point A in a matrix. What is a matrix? Actually a matrix is like a grid made of values that we can see as our playground, as our ground where we walk and we find a path to reach B. But how do we do that? Actually there are many algorithms but the best algorithm to solve this problem in an offline mode so not in a fast way is dice algorithm basically you walk through the, all the nodes of the matrix or the values of the matrix and you track each node and you want to find the best way to reach the point b this may need a long time to compute because the matrix can be very huge and you need to explore every single node of the matrix so can it be used in a game Actually, yes, dice algorithm can be used in many games who doesn't need to compute very big matrices and doesn't have big levels where matrices, where ground matrices are not so huge. But now I'm showing to you how this algorithm works with an example that I've prepared for you. So what are the basics of pathfinding? The basic of pathfinding are two algorithms that are used in also in other areas of the computer science. These algorithms are DFS and BFS. That means depth first search or breadth first search. I'm showing you the examples right now on the screen and this shows you how this algorithm works and how do they behave in a matrix. Aren't these a good way to solve the problem? Actually, no. As you can see, the DFS is not very efficient and the BFS is efficient, but not so much. First, because you need a lot of time to compute the path and very often the path is not the best possible path. So we now want to find an algorithm that finds the best path, but not in the optimal time. Okay, so after Dijkstra, after we learned of this algorithm, how can we improve this? Actually, there are many ways. I will list you some ways and I will show you some ways right now. Um, that are called heuristic algorithms, so algorithms that tries to find the best possible way to track a path inside a matrix, but really often the path is not the best. It's actually an approximation. But how can we find the best approximation algorithm? Right now the most used algorithm, the most known algorithm for the pathfinding in an efficient way and in an optimal way, and a suboptimal way, sorry, is the ASAR algorithm. Right now I'm showing you an example of ASAR algorithm and this algorithm basically like explore the matrix, only a part of the matrix and finds this suboptimal path only with nodes that he explores. How do this algorithm work? Basically to know something about this algorithm we need to explain the uh, three algorithms described before. So we start from the BFS slash DFS, then we go to dice and then we go to ASAR. Why BFS and DFS are not efficient? Actually, BFS and DFS are a way to explore a matrix, but then you need a way to track the best path possible. DFS and BFS doesn't mark a node. Actually, they do explore nodes, but they don't mark them with anything. So the computer will try to find the, a possible path that links A to B, not the best one, maybe the worst one. And actually um, the DFS is useful when you have a tree and you want to traverse a, a tree, or a BFS is useful also when you have a tree you want to traverse a tree, or also when you want to travel through a matrix and explore all the possible nodes, but not. They're not used to find the path because they're not good to do that. For doing that, we have Dijkstra algorithm. Why should we use Dijkstra if we know that we have a small matrix or if we want to work on like offline data, not of uh, real-time data. Video games are real-time, by the way. 
Dystra is really good because when you traverse a matrix, then you mark nodes with a certain distance from the start and a certain distance to the end. So when you mark all the nodes, then you find the best possible ways through the nodes following the smallest distance. So if you have all the nodes, then you know all the distances from the start and all the distances to the end. So then you basically power these nodes and you find the best possible path. Don't worry if you didn't understand, I will make a video on how to implement a dice algorithm in an efficient way. Actually, I will show you how to implement the entire application that I developed for you that will be linked in the description, by the way. How does the A star improves the dice star algorithm? Improves. Actually, it doesn't improve any algorithm, it's in heuristics, so it doesn't give you the best way to travel a matrix, but it will give you a good way to travel a matrix. Actually, the algorithm will traverse only some nodes and it uses a certain function that decides which node is better and which node is not good. And uh, we will talk about this function in a video, in a dedicated video, where we'll discuss the, the ASR works and why it's a good compromise to substitute the Dijkstra algorithm for the pathfinding technique. Actually, ASR marks all the nodes similarly to Dijkstra, but it does use also a function It tracks the distance to the end, the distance from the start, and also in which node we are currently. It doesn't allow you to pass through walls, and it's really important, <laughs> like if you don't implement any teleport in your, in your game, then your algorithm should be aware of the fact that they cannot travel through walls and these kind of things that are the black blocks in the, in the matrix. And uh, then this algorithm explore all the nodes that it decide. Actually, as you will see, I have tons of implementation of ASAR that does choose the nodes to, to explore in a particular way, way. The marking of the node is done by also a function that will be explained in depth in, in another video because I don't want to make too much com confusion. But basically this function will track, similarly to dice, right, the distance to the end and the distance from the start with an extra distance that we'll talk about in a future video. This finds a suboptimal path and you should always, or like not always, but very often use the A star algorithm to find a path. Like to, if you, for example, have a player and have an enemy, this enemy should follow the player and attack the player. How can you do that? Well, you can do that in many, many ways. The pathfinding is not always the perfect technique, but it's the better way to find, to find where the player is and to reach the player in a real-time environment. So, you can implement an A-star to track the player, follow the player, and attack the player. Okay, so for today is enough. We will talk about other algorithms that are really, really useful in the game industry in the next video. And also I wanna open a tutorial series on algorithms and these kind of things, because I'm really interested into algorithms and I do really love to implement algorithms and data structures not only for games, but also in the real life environment. In this series, I will work through the algorithm, the A-star implementation in the Unity environment, and also with Dicefra implementation, BFS implementation, TFS implementation. And I will give you some example where you can use this specific algorithm. So don't forget to watch the practical video only after you watch this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.